Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be going over how you can get the keyboard to work within Common UI. Now for the solution, I actually didn't come up with it myself at all in the slightest. I take no credit for it at all. Um, I actually found it within a thread on the forums uh, back in like 2022 uh, by a user called Patterson. And they actually posted the entire solution. I tried it out myself. I played around with it for a bit, uh, tried to modify, and it works. And it's fully functional. So I'm just putting this out as a video so that's available. I couldn't find it on YouTube. I was able to locate it throughout the forum. So uh, I'll also have that link there as well. Because again, I'm not trying to take credit for it, but I'm just trying to have this available to others. So if others ran into issues where they couldn't get it to work, you have it easily accessible. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're going to go into it. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can on what exactly we're doing and why we're doing it. And then that way you can kind of learn the purpose of what we're building. But nonetheless, let's get into it. All right. So from the get go, I'm not starting from scratch. Uh, so I currently have a UI and to which I have a button already. So in order to make the keyboard work, you basically have to add a bunch of functions onto your button base. So the base of the button for all of your widgets. So if you end up having multiple different types of buttons, you're going to need to have to add these functions onto it. What you can do is actually create a very generic button. So instead of having all of this, you could actually just have like an overlay in text or you could, I don't know, even not have any of this. And then you could just have the base and then you can add in all the functions that were going to be added. And then afterwards, what you can do is then go into user interface, widget blueprint, and then go to button base. And then from here, you'd go into here and then hit select. And then what that would do is make a child of your button. So new button. And then from here, you can then just start adding in whatever you want. So um, I don't know, you could add another text. Oops, let's go here, um, put it in the center. it style and like that and then you could end up readjusting editing it whatever you want so you can remove the overlay etc all right so let's get rid of that that's just so in case you need to make more buttons that are maybe not exactly the same as the first one that you made so what i'm going to do is i'm going to display what we currently have so if you haven't watched the common UI tutorial I made, everything is structured throughout that tutorial. And then from here, what we'll see is that you can hover on top, but if you actually go on the keyboard, you'll notice that it just kind of has this weird blue box around. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that blue box because uh, we don't need it. So we're going to go to edit project settings. I'm trying to remember what this is called. I think it's like, um, yeah, render focus rule. And then you go in here and just go to never. And then from here, well, we have keyboard focus right now, but now you can't see anything at all. So I could be going over buttons and I hit enter. So we'll look like I'm on the play button, but you can't see that. So let's fix that. We're gonna go into the event graph. Actually, no, 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 before we go to the event graph, we're gonna have to do a few things. There's a couple settings we need to adjust. So for starters, we need the triggering triggering <laughs> input action. Uh, so this is what's gonna trigger um, clicking on the button. So for here, we're just gonna do the basic standard select button. So we're gonna use our select input to go into there. We also need to make sure that we have a style set. So I have a style, it's very simple. So if I go into it, we'll have like a teal color kind of, and then just darkens as we go through. So let's get rid of that. If you have not created one, just hit this plus button and then I'll have you create a new button style here. It automatically generates like a blueprints folder. I really hate that, but uh, just make sure to go into whatever, let's see, whatever file that you have here. And then from here, we want to make sure that we have the selectable uh, off and then go scroll down. We want to make sure that is focusable is turned on. And then we also want to make sure that is enabled is turned on. So that will allow us to 
have all the functionalities to filter through these buttons and setting the focus. So as of right now, all I have is under pre-construct, we're setting the text. This is very simple stuff, nothing fancy. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we are going to need to save our input action button. So the input action that we set here, so which is the select button. So what we're going to do is on initialize. We're going to, let's give us some room. We're going to get the input action. And then let's promote this to a variable. Let's call this uh, default. This is our default input action. The reason why we need this is so that when we are switching to other buttons, we want to actually disable the uh, input actions for the ones that we're losing focus on uh, because how the kind of mouse keyboard works, uh, it's still kind of like hovers on top and can still have them enabled. So you can end up pressing uh, either multiple or just none. Uh, so I think it actually, most of the time, it just comes out to an error and it just doesn't work. Uh, but don't quote me on that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to then set the triggered action. From here, we're going to want to promote this to a variable again. So we want a second one. And this one is going to be our null input action. So what this is going to do is that on initialize, we are saving the default. And then we're going to then set the triggered input action to nothing. We want it to equal to nothing, so we can't trigger it automatically. Um, and then we will reestablish that input action later on. And then from here, uh, what we need to do is we're going to get the current style. So scroll all the way down to get style. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then promote that to a variable because we need to store this as well. And I'll go into why we're doing that as well. Okay. So the reason we are setting this to a variable is because at some point we're going to change the style depending on whether the keyboard has focus or the gamepad or, or mouse. And we want to be able to kind of revert back to that default, just like we do what we will do with this default input action. Okay, so we're going to scroll down. The next things we're going to do is we're going to do the focus paths. So we have event on added focus path and then event on, uh, oh wait, let's just type focus. It's event remove from focus path. And you'll notice that if you hover on top, it kind of gives like a very generic thing. Like if focus is gained on this widget, uh, it's added to the focus path, which wasn't previously a, a part of. And basically what that means is that uh, you're gaining focus <laughs> in a different type of manner. Uh, so for example, if the keyboard is moving to the next button, it's now going to the next focus. And then we're gonna be able to do some actions there. And then if we are losing focus, we're going to then do another set of actions. It's not precisely losing and gaining focus because you'll notice that we actually have on focus and then we also have on focus lost. Uh, so there is slight differentials between these. I may not have explained those perfectly, uh, but they do have different purposes. But try to get the gist of for this purpose of moving between buttons, we're going to be utilizing the focus path. And then from here, what we want to do is that once we have an event on added to focus path, that's why I end up saying like on focus is because that's just a mouthful to say. Uh, so we're going to set the triggered input action. It's going to be set to self. And what we want to do is we're going to set this to our default. So basically upon the path of gaining focus, we are then going to set our default back. Uh, so therefore, when we have focus with our keyboard, we're gonna regain our input action. And then we want to also set the style. And what we need to do now is we're gonna now create a second one. 
So we're going to promote this to a variable. Let's go here. And then what we need to do is we need to now create a second style. So on contrary to our main style, we need to also have a keyboard style. So we're going to go into here saying as I have my one style, I'm actually going to copy this and we'll call this underscore keyboard for lack of naming. And then for here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this tint and I'm also going to put it in the normal base. Uh, so for the keyboard, the normal just is basically the hover. It's really annoying, but that's kind of how it works. Uh, but just keep that in mind. And then from here, we're going to go into our keyboard. Well, let's make sure to compile that so we have a variable. Let me open this up a little. And then we're going to select the keyboard. And then what we want to do is that upon removal from the focus path, we're going to copy all of this here. Let me try to, OK. And then we're going to switch these out with the opposites. So we're going to put into main, and then we're going to put into null. So basically, once uh, we're on the path of losing focus, we are going to then get rid of our input action. So we're going to set it back to it's not going to trigger anything. Uh, this is to prevent like the mouse from, from triggering it or like pressing enter and triggering basically nothing. And then we also want to set the style back to main. Uh, the reason for that is because if we don't set it back to our main one, so if we look into both our button styles, so we have our, this is our main, we have the normal base and we have the hover. And then for the keyboard, you'll notice that the normal base and hovered are basically the same thing. So if you ended up switching back without switching to the main, it will stay in basically what's considered a hovered state. And you'll end up just seeing um, all hovered buttons. And the next thing that we want to do is that on hovered, we're going to then set keyboard focus. So basically what this is, is that when the mouse hovers on top of, or the keyboard hovers on top of, it's just gonna automatically set to the keyboard focus, which is then going to set the keyboard style. Uh, so even if you end up like moving the mouse uh, to different buttons, you're still gonna get the same style and it's not gonna cause any issues. And then, let's see. Do, do, do. Let's see what else. Am... Another thing that was utilized for where I found this information is that if you actually have the button style, I don't know why I closed it, but uh, if you set the text styles to them, uh, you can also basically do the same thing here where it's, um, let's see, on current, oops, current style changed. What you would want to do is then get the button set style and then get current style text and what that would do is that every time you're changing the style so whether it's to the main or the keyboard uh, you'll be able to update the text style as well uh, so if you do have text that are bound to the button styles uh, this is needed because it'll allow you to update accordingly so that let's let's say your buttons went from they are default white, and then when hovered on, they turn blue. Uh, if you don't do this, then they may just stay blue. However, I'm not actually utilizing that in here, so we don't need that. Uh, so let's take a look to see what we've built so far. Um, I think one thing we need to do is make sure, okay, that is set. Null doesn't need to be set. And then we have that set. Let's take a look. So if we walk through, we'll notice I'm using my keyboard right now and I'm going through. So left, left, right, right. And I go on top of mouse, we can do that. But there's one other thing to notice is that if I did left right now or right, we'll notice that the button is still 
hovered because the mouse has focus. Now I wasn't able to perfect this. I was able to find like a half fix and it kind of bothers me right now, but if anybody ever finds more information uh, before I do, like please make a comment, say something. I really appreciate it. Uh, but what we can do to solve part of the issue is that we'll go into on unfocused. So basically when we lose focus, uh, this is on contrary to the remove from focus path. If you actually were to add it to here, it actually doesn't work. Uh, so just keep in mind for that as well. Mm -hmm. All these functions have similar names, but they do slightly different things. What we want to do is we're gonna branch. And from here, we want to do is that when we lose focus, we wanna check if the user has focus. So has user focus. And essentially that's, does the mouse have focus? is what we're using it as. And we're gonna get the player controller. So basically if the mouse currently has focus, we are going to then, let's see, uh, do, do, do. oh, no, no, sorry. I got it all backwards. Okay, okay. Um, with this, we are branching and this is checking to see if we unfocus to make sure that like um, the keyboard currently doesn't have focus or gamepad doesn't have focus or you're currently not moving with the mouse. Uh, so not that if this is mouse focus, this is if a user has focus on the current widget, which it does not. And then we'll go to set style. And then what we're gonna do is we're now going to need a third style. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the first one and we'll call this button um i don't know we'll just call it button three i don't i don't have correct names right now and then what we're going to do is basically the reverse we're going to copy this tint and we're going to put it here but we're doing the opposite of the other one this one will allow us to make this button look as if it is not hovered when the mouse is currently hovering but you're using the keyboard and then you, I don't know, you could call this like remove style. I don't have a good name right here. We're gonna do common button style class. And we'll go to button three and we'll plug that in. And now if we go in here, we'll notice that now I'm moving the keyboard, but the mouse currently has is currently hovering but nothing is happening the only thing that i don't like is that so right now i'm hovering in the quit button but if i move the mouse on top of the play it doesn't regain focus and that really bothers me but i've been trying all of the functions and i couldn't find a workaround for it uh, but as of right now like if you were to unhover it does regain focus so it works throughout that as long as you move it around but it's not really ideal because in a game, uh, the most user-friendly is if they start moving the mouse again, they should get focused. They shouldn't have to go off the button uh, to make it look that way. But if I do click, I do actually click the button. So if I were to move the settings away, but I click play, I still can use everything. But yeah, that's just uh, something that irks me a little. But nonetheless, that is how you can have the keyboard work on buttons. If this is super helpful, uh, give me a like, follow, join Discord, all of the self-promo stuff. Thanks for having you guys tune back in. Have a good rest of your day.